Okay, for our Heather Geller vases, you can see that um, we're going to draw in black and then add some coloring with crayon and finish it with paint here at school. If you don't have a black paint marker, you can do everything in crayon or you can draw it with a Sharpie and paint with watercolor paints. Just remember if you're painting, you don't want to draw with a water-based marker because it will smear. So whatever you have is fine or you can always do it on your iPad. So let's start off by just putting your name and class code on the back and then turn it over and you can put your pencil away. That's all we're going to draw with the pencil. Remember if you're using the paint marker, our number one rule is we don't squeeze the paint marker. Say that with me, everyone. Don't squeeze the paint marker. And we're going to start by drawing flowers on the top half of our page. And if you don't know where to start, a circle is a great place to start because Heather Galler uses a lot of circles in her work. And as I draw out my flowers, I'm just thinking of getting variety. So um, maybe on my next one, I'll start with two circles and I'll do my petals a little bit different. Maybe this time they're a little bit longer. And if your flowers start to bump into each other, then you might need to just skip and finish strong so it looks like your petals overlap. This makes your artwork look like it has depth. And so I'm going to just fill the top half of my paper with a variety of flowers to make it look interesting. Once you get done drawing your flowers, go ahead and use some leaves to fill in some of your smaller spaces and make it look more realistic. And then for the vase, we're just going to do two diagonal lines with a curved line at the bottom, and that gives the illusion that our vase is round or three-dimensional. If you see any of the top of your vase, it depends on where your flowers are, that line can be curved too. And then a line that goes behind the vase, so I'll jump over it to make the table, and then put a simple pattern on your vase and table. Remember, you can do your patterns however you want. Here I did a couple of different types of stripes. On this one I did some polka dots. Here I did some wavy stripes with checkerboards. And here I filled in some of my stripes. So don't feel like yours has to look exactly like mine. In fact, it's better if you do it different. When you're done with your paint marker, put the lid on it and take it over to the quarantine shelf. Okay, the next step is just to fill in a couple of parts of each flower with our crayon. And then we're also going to add a pattern to the background, some sort of a simple pattern. Um, because we will be painting over this next week, you don't want to color the entire thing. I'm just going to pick maybe two or three parts on each flower. Um, so I wanna leave some to paint and you also want to make sure you color dark. Okay, that looks good. You can see I colored in some parts of each flower. I left something on each flower um, to paint. If you have time and you want to color in your leaves, that would be fine too, but I'm going to go ahead and add a simple pattern to my background. So you can see here, I just did some different types of stripes. On this one, I did vertical stripes and they're all one kind. And on this one, I did some simple polka dots. You be creative and do what you think would look good. That looks good. That's all we're going to do for today. Next week, we'll maybe color a little bit more in if we have time and then finish filling the rest either with crayon or watercolor paints if we have them. So make sure you take a good picture of this and submit it to Canvas. Have fun, take care.